Roswell Sleep Deprivation Crew here. It's zero dark 30 in the morning, and we're on our way to Portland International Airport. We're flying out to the New York City Drone Film Festival. We're making this trip courtesy our good friends at Go Professional Cases. And while we're there, we're gonna see if we can pick up some pro tips for you guys on how you can make better aerial videos. The day after the film festival, the New York City Drone User Group was hosting a fly-in, so we brought Little Bird along. Next, we had to decide who was going to carry our LiPo batteries through security. So it's been a while since I've seen Lucidity. <laughs> oh, wait. There he is. Oops. Here he comes. <laughs> I said it had all the bad indicators, whatever that means. Although, I don't think I can blame him. When you look at it on the x-ray scanner, it does kind of look like a bomb. Yeah, well... <laughs> okay guys, so we've been in the air for a couple hours now, and this will really bake your noodle. While I've been sitting here, I'm editing the video you're watching right now. So we made it finally, and provided we don't freeze it as we're wearing coats, we're gonna walk the red carpet a couple minutes. Yeah, our um, friends at uh, Hobbyco Futaba were very nice and gave us VIP tickets to this event. So let's go in and see what it's all about. Roswell Flight Test Crew red carpet coverage brought to you by the Futaba 14SG transmitter. Tekkenstein says, It's got so many programmable switches, I had to start labeling things to keep things straight. Lucidity says, when I take this thing out of my bag at the field, no one knows I'm a total noob. The Futaba 14SG transmitter. The Roswell flight test crew wanted one so badly, they went out and bought it themselves with their own money. Roswell flight test crew. So now we're going to talk to some of the folks who are here at the film festival and see what advice they have to pass along to you. Fly as much as you possibly can. Find things that you like to shoot and shoot them and just continue to shoot. It's just that simple. I mean, there's nothing beyond just actually spending the time with your hands on the sticks, practicing your moves back and forth, left, right, with it facing you side to side, moving around obstacles looking at your monitor and trying to fly a little bit of FPV even if you're not using goggles and really just get used to flying. I mean, that's the best way to get your skills up. It's the only way to get your hands comfortable and get that wiring right, you know? I mean, otherwise you're never going to do well. You'll just do okay. And doing okay is okay. You know, you can have fun, you can shoot whatever, but if you really want to compete, which now we have thanks to the festival, you have to up your skills. You gotta, you gotta spend the time. You gotta fly. You gotta practice. You know, one of our winners tonight, um, Robert McIntosh, who won the FPV Proximity Technical Category, is what I think is who is the best, you know, FPV flyer I've ever seen, if not the most cinematic pilot period I've ever seen. And you know, he's got a couple videos, and one of them, you know, starts out with some basketball player saying, practice, practice, man, practice. And then it goes off and it goes into this flying, and it's like he's flying around the beach, flying low around things. I mean, like, this is exactly, that's why he put it in there. He's just practicing, he's shooting, he's doing his thing, and that's why he won the award, because he's that good. If you want to enter the festival next year, look at the categories, look at the competition from this year, and if you really want to win, you have to shoot amazing material. I think one of the biggest things that somebody can do, aside from actually flying really well, also is hire a real editor. You know, really like work with a filmmaker. If you're just a drone pilot, work with a filmmaker. And if you're a filmmaker, then awesome. But the reality is, it's two things. When you're talking about drone cinema, you're talking about drones and cinema. And cinema is filmmaking. And that means editing, music, pacing, all that other kind of stuff. That stuff is really important. And Unfortunately, a lot of things didn't make it into the festival this year because of that. Because they just didn't have it edited well. They just didn't have it together when it came to the cinema part.
first, I think you will be caught up in uh, with all with all like controlling and all this technology and all that kind of stuff. But then you should start looking at the picture and and like looking at the, the real shot and the movement of the drone and forget about everything else. And unless you can't really forget about any, anything else, uh, keep practicing. I would say don't go too fast to start with. Just, um, you, you don't have to be Chuck Yeager on first day. You don't have to see how high it can go on the first day. You don't have to, uh, you don't really have to show off on the first day. Just get used to it. Fly in, you know, a range of different conditions before you start pushing yourself, really, you know? Fly in um, dusk, fly in direct sunlight, fly while it's a little bit windy, you know? And, and just play it safe, you know? That's good advice. Play it safe. <laughs> I've worked my way all the way from a small uh, drone that I think had no name whatsoever and it had a little ladybug or a you know, bumblebee on it um, and then stepped up to there to a, uh, to a basically a DIY uh, hex and then uh, the next step up from there was a NASA controlled with um, uh, Taro 950. And so what I can categorically tell you is start small and work up. It's less expensive. The advice I can give you guys is invest in a parachute. Uh, <laughs> it's a little pricey, but at the same time, it'll save you a few thousand dollars if something does happen to your drone. And uh, you know, uh, I've been doing this for uh, a while, and uh, even though I've been doing it for a while, I still crash, and uh, you learn. And uh, now that uh, I have parachutes, luckily I haven't had a chance to deploy them yet. But uh, you know, it's there. take the Phantom or, or any other product out of the box, it's quite easy to fly, although when you really get talented, you can capture some amazing footage and, and much more advanced. So our advice, um, as we're an education company to people, is, is to go that step further, know your product in terms of the, uh, the facilities that are on board, for example, IOC or any other programs that you can use, uh, and really practice, practice, practice to get very skilled with your, with your craft. Yeah. Dad? I would say check your regulations in your country before you do anything, before you take it out of the box. And if there is a doubt, there is no doubt. All right, and look who we ran into. It's Rick from Go Fresh Little Cases. How are you doing, Rick? Oh, welcome to Big Apple. Thank you, thank you. We're glad to be here. So any advice for the newcomer? That's the question we're asking everybody tonight. I would say they just really need to make sure to go out and buy quality product and make sure that they buy their product from people that can uh, maintain it, help them maintain it, and learn how to fly their copters properly. Anything else? And of course, buy a Go Professional case. Good advice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, look who we caught up with here. It's uh, folks from Rotor Drone. This is Erica Driver, this Hi. is Rotor Drone. And I understand you've got a cool new product people want to learn to fly better. Yes, we do, the Spiral Handy Guide. What's inside? There's tons of stuff inside. You can see here that we have um, how-tos, tips for success, on location, everything you need to know for when you're out there flying your drone. Outstanding, and where can yeah. people get this? They can get it on airagestore.com for now, and then we'll be selling it other places soon. So keep in tune. All right. Well, thanks, Erica. Can I keep it? Yeah, of course. Cool. <laughs> thanks, Erica. No problem. All right. We caught up with Dave and Sarah O'Neill from that drone show. How are you guys doing? Oh, we're doing great, Patrick. Absolutely. Thanks so much for having us awesome. out here. It's, it's a balmy uh, 21 degrees outside here, outside the Director's Guild. Truth in advertising, I don't think it's quite that cold, but it's certainly not warm. So anyway, we've been asking everybody we've been talking to tonight, what advice would you give a newbie who's interested in getting into this who maybe wants to enter next year's festival? What would you tell them? The advice for a newbie to get into next year's festival is try to have some kind of story, fly within the limits of your machine and within the limits of you, and take multiple takes and really kind of storyboard it out. It's one thing to go out and fly, and I'm guilty of this all the time. I like to take my rig up and I start flying before I realize I didn't actually shoot the thing that I was supposed to go and shoot because I was having too much fun. So what I do is I grab like a little blade or a little Proto X and I fly around for like 10 minutes, get it out of my system. Then I take the S900 and then I go get my shot. And that is my advice. Plan, 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 because when you do, this audience in here next year at the Directors Guild in New York is going to be cheering for you. 
Yeah, my advice is be creative. Don't let your imagination be your limit. We saw some awesome things tonight, especially like the droney category. We all think that's just a droney coming towards you. No, it blew it out of the water today. We saw some great stuff, so your imagination is the limit. And of course, we're going to be seeing you guys next weekend at International Drone Day. How's that coming together? Go ahead, Sarah. <laughs> Tell them that she's not stressed at all about it at all. <laughs> We have 150 different teams in over 60 countries in every continent on the globe. In North America alone, we have 60 teams in over 35 states. Um, it's coming together pretty well. And in Las Vegas, which is where we will be, um, things are going well. We've got you guys there. We'll be there. We've got the drone girl there. We've got Rihanna Lake in there. We have got tons of really, really Anthony cool Anthony Coles, people. we've got FTV racing. We've got all kinds of stuff. We, have, we also have Demon Seed himself coming to the show. He's going to be there with a search and rescue from Swarm. None other than Jim Bowers is going going to be in attendance. All right, so now we're in Brooklyn at a fly-in, which is being held as part of the film festival last night. And we're at the Seaview Rotor Wings Club, which is just outside of Coney Island. And there are a bunch of guys flying uh, helis here, that's what this club does, and a bunch of people with multi-rotors and FPV ships. So let's check out what they're doing. All right, thanks for coming out today. I told you you'd be freezing butt, and here we are doing it. Um, so, once again, I just want to thank all the members of CV Rotary RC for hosting us today, doing us a huge solid. Big yeah. round of applause. Well, uh, as you might imagine, New York City uh, region is a pretty tough uh, flying environment, and our good friends at the AMA, uh, through some arrangements, were able to secure this uh, AMA field for us to fly at today. Um, you know, the, the New York City Drone User Group has recently become very actively involved with the AMA um, because we share so many interests. Um, up until now, I think that there was some uh, uh, connotation that the AMA really wasn't on the drone user side, and I really see dramatic changes in that regard uh, based on meetings and conversations. Uh, we've, we've really been welcomed with open arms. So uh, I, I would encourage our members to join only because um, it just gives us access to a lot more political clout and also a, a, a much broader network of users and, uh, and real support. I, I think that the FAA really uh, really respects the AMA as a community-based organization and that's something that we, you know, we feel strongly about. Okay, CV Rotary Wings is a model helicopter club that was started in 1992 by Roman Perosic, Prokash Prasad, and a few other people, uh, Seth Sterling, as a, 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 a medium for RC helicopter pilots in the city of New York. RC helicopter flying is very unique to quite a few. Um, it is something that does not require a tremendously large field, but it's something that certainly needs, needs some room in order for you to grow and to learn. Our original field used to be in Canarsie at 108th Street and Seaview Avenue. And later on throughout the years, we started to outgrow that field. And we inquired of the city of New York if they had any other uh, fields that were underutilized. And they showed us several. And this is the field they settled on. And we wholeheartedly agreed that this is the place for us to be. But for many people that have come to this field, um, what they pretty much have said is they couldn't believe that something like this could ever exist in Brooklyn. But this is our little slice of heaven. So one of our goals today is to get some still photographs for Rotor Drone Magazine. And we had a little Canon camera here with some hacked firmware with an inter intervalometer, which takes pictures every second or so. So we hooked that next to our GoPro. We're flying through the GoPro, taking pictures with the still camera. So basically just fly it around, tape it down to the aircraft, good to go. So I mean, you're pretty, but it'll work. What a wind, it's getting worse. The winds aloft were ferocious, but thanks to Tekkenstein's flying skills, Little Bird completed her mission and came home safe. All right, so now we want to hear from you. What advice would you have for people who are getting started? Put your thoughts in the comments below and subscribe if you're new to us. Well, hope you're watching. See you next time. All right, fly safe.